What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be giving you another full review. We are gonna be talking about one of my favorite revolvers ever. We're gonna be going over the Smith & Wesson 327 Performance Center, two inch barreled, 357 Magnum. Now, this guy is a very unique revolver. As a matter of fact, it's one of the more unique and more fun guns I've had to shoot than any other revolver I think I've ever owned. The second I saw this, I wanted it immediately. I actually got this used at uh, Mr. Guns and I got it with an appendix carry holster. As a matter of fact, a guy that traded it commented on my recent video, so it made me uh, motivated to do a full review on it since you guys have been asking for it anyway. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the gun, like I said, this is an end frame. It's an ultralight frame with a two inch barrel. And the real unique part about it is that not only does it have a two inch barrel, but it has eight shots of 357 mag. And if you want to get better than that, it also has the performance center package. So it does have a very good trigger as well. Now, the weight on this guy is only 23.2 ounces. So making it very lightweight, very easy to carry. You get eight rounds of 357 Magnum or 38 special, which is very nice because I've shot a lot more 38 special and 38 plus P through this than I have 357 Magnum. Now it has a titanium cylinder and barrel shroud, a performance center trigger with the stop. It has a performance center tuned action, scandium frame, and the cylinder is cut for moon clips. If you want to rock moon clips, that does uh, give you a much faster reload time. However, we haven't tested that on this one. It also has this awesome wood grip to it, which is very good looking, but a little bit slipperier than a rubber grip. And rubber grips are a little bit more useful. However, this looks so good, I kept it on here. A good portion of why I like this gun is because of how it looks. It does have, like I said, the titanium uh, cylinder, and that gives it more of a two-tone, three-tone look, I suppose, with the wood grip and I just really like how it looks a lot with the longer grip and the very short barrel. It just looks odd because normally you see a little shorter uh, grip with a longer barrel or you see a bunch of different configurations but not usually this one. Now Smith & Wesson revolvers are notoriously known for one thing, giving you good performance for the money. Smith revolvers do a great job at giving you Colt performance for half the price in my personal opinion. Now that's not saying I don't like Colt revolvers, I just really really love Smith & Wesson revolvers. The 686 was my first revolver and I I've loved it ever since. I actually bought a new one four or five years ago, and I really enjoy that one as well. And this one is just a continuation of that. The Performance Center revolvers also have my favorite triggers in them. They have very, very light double action triggers and an awesome single action trigger as well. Now, that's good because in a revolver, you have the double single action design. Uh, you carry it in double action, so if you wanna fire a round, all you have to do is pull the long trigger all the way to the rear, and it will fire the round, it will turn the cylinder, and you pull it all the way out, and it will reset for the next round. Now, that is a long trigger pull. However, with this one, it's light, so it's pretty easy to do. However, if you want extra accuracy, all you have to do is put it into single action, then you have a very light two to three pound trigger pull, and you're gonna get that accuracy that you want. Very cool system, makes it very safe for carry, and it also gives you options for whatever situation you might find yourself in. The two inch barrel does shorten up your accuracy and your muzzle velocity a good bit. However, uh, it does make it more carryable and it does make it super fun because smoke fucking flies out of the front of it every time you shoot it, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But it does come with this HD front sight and this kind of trough the rear sight, which I didn't think was gonna be very usable. However, as it turns out, trigger is always king and sights are a little bit secondary. And if you have a really good trigger and okay sights, you still can actually make some pretty quality hits. You can hit it 100 yards, one out of three. So that's not too bad with a two inch barreled snub nose revolver. As far as the philosophy of use on a gun like this, I think it would be pretty good for carry. Honestly, if you carry a revolver, I see no reason why you wouldn't want to carry this one. It'd be comfortable, it would be lightweight, and with the short barrel, it actually doesn't make for a bad carry revolver. As I said, the guy who traded this in also made a uh, custom appendix carry holster, and I do use that occasionally because I think it's hilarious to carry this, and I wouldn't carry it if it wasn't functional, it wouldn't be useful. What would be the point? It's fun to carry cool guns as long as they work well, and I believe this one does. So the philosophy of use of carry works very well. You could also use this for a home defense gun, no problem. If you think you couldn't defend yourself with an eight shot 357, think again. It doesn't have a weapon light on it, but you, you could use a handheld light and a handheld light is always good. As a matter of fact, the wife and I used the handheld light when we were walking last night just to make sure there wasn't a coyote around. So it's always good to have a handheld light and it works well with this, but you are gonna have to practice those one-handed shooting techniques, so be aware of that. So home defense, concealed carry, and 
And honestly, could you hunt with this? I probably would get a six or an eight inch barrel for me personally, just to get uh, take real advantage of that 357 mag ballistics. But could you hunt small game with this? Probably. Could you use it for bear defense? I would probably get something bigger again to get more velocity on that 357 cartridge. Now, as far as uh, reliability, this was super reliable, and revolvers are super reliable as long as you use them correctly and you keep them clean. Revolvers do need to be a little more clean than a semi-automatic, like a Glock or like a polymer frame pistol, maybe not like 1911, but a polymer frame pistol, they need to be cleaned a little bit more and they need to be lubed and stuff like that. But what they really need is they really need proper use. Don't short up the trigger when you're running the trigger. Make sure you pull all the way in and all the way back out. Don't try to ride the reset like a semi-auto because you can cause timing issues. Also, make sure that you clean the cylinder pretty frequently because it does have a harder and harder time getting out and you will have a harder and harder time ejecting the rounds. Although the ejector on the gun is very nice, one of the things I find interesting is I do end up having to switch my technique a little bit and just use a standard finger over the pot method. I used to use the pot method, but with a barrel there, it's not generally a problem. But for some reason, now that it has a two inch barrel, I pop the barrel instead of the fucking ejector for some reason. So I had to go back to just using my finger. But that's no big deal. Continuing with the reliability, we did shoot 357 mag through this we shot winchester white box and then we shot some defensive rounds i think from sig but i don't really remember where exactly i got them and then we shot uh 357 or 38 special plus p defensive rounds we shot 38 uh, target ammo a ton of that through this lawman uh winchester and fioki i believe and then all of that worked really really well none of it had problems with ejection or anything like that as far as accuracy goes the gun was very accurate for what it is a two inch revolver is as accurate as you are sorry but that's kind of a myth that two inch revolver won't give you any accuracy the short barrel lack of accuracy thing is honestly kind of a myth. You can actually increase your barrel length and decrease your accuracy. A lot of it's due to rigidity and harmonics. And in this case, for whatever reason, this one's very accurate. If I do my part, you can hit a man-sized target at 100 yards with a 38 special target ammo. Like you could take cheap Winchester white box, put it in this, and you can hit an IPSC target at 100 yards as long as your trigger finger is doing what it's supposed to do. At 100 yards. So we'll have to see how that goes. Pretty good. And that is superb, in my personal opinion, for a two inch barrel revolver uh, of this caliber. So accuracy is great, especially considering the trigger, because one of the biggest problems to managing accuracy with a revolver is gonna be managing that trigger. So if you have to stage the double action all the way to the point where it's at the back of the wall, and then pull. If you have to, you can use that left hand, pull that, uh, hammer back in a single action you can run it that way now that's my preferred method for running a hammer if you're running one hand you can go like that but it does take bigger hands sometimes or a little more hand strength personally i think it's faster to use the support hand so you come over the top like that and you fan it like that pull the trigger fan pull the trigger i like that personally and give you very accurate shots and it doesn't take that long so accuracy is great you got it. I'm done. Here, take it. No. Oh my god! <laughs> as far as the ergonomics on the gun, my personal favorite is the Smith. That's one of the reasons why I love the Smiths, again, is because of the way they open. It seems very intuitive. You just push forward on the latch, pop the cylinder out, and you can do your reloading, slam the cylinder shut, and you're ready to go. Very intuitive, very easy. Revolvers are great for carry, they're great for home defense, especially for new shooters, partly because of how easy it is to operate them and how little hand strength it actually takes to load and unload them. That is very nice. But however, the one thing that's not nice for new shooters is going to be the double single action system. That's something you're gonna have to practice. If you're new to handguns, you've never shot a handgun before, and you get a double action only revolver, you have a great dry fire tool, but you're gonna have a very difficult gun to shoot. So keep in mind that the double action does take practice to master. The great thing about it is, is you can dry fire it all day and night and get good at it and you don't have to cycle a slide or anything like that. The bad news is, is you're gonna have to get good at it because if you've ever pulled a 1911 two and a half pound trigger straight to the rear and straight out, that's gonna be a hell of a lot easier and a hell of a lot quicker than something like this. It's a long way and it's heavier. The shortest point is always gonna be faster. A shorter trigger is always gonna be faster. You could be the fastest shot alive and you're still gonna be faster with the 1911 than you are gonna be with a revolver. Now the MSRP in these are gonna be $1,500. They're gonna be anywhere from 15 to 16 to 1700 bucks. 
I got this for 1200, which I would consider a great buy. However, let's be honest, there are cheaper options available that will do the same thing. If you're looking for a standard carry revolver, this is your first gun, you're just looking to get into a decent revolver, I wouldn't recommend this. I don't think this is a good way to go. I think you should probably get into maybe a Ruger LCRX, like 38 Special, and if you wanna go 357, a Ruger GP100, a Smith & Wesson 686, 629, all the basic ones are gonna be great. I think you can get into a Smith or a Ruger somewhere between five and $700 that will serve you very well in all the same categories this one will. It just won't be quite as fun, and it won't probably hold eight rounds, and it also probably won't have the performance center package. That's kind of what you're paying for. You're paying for the titanium cylinder, you're paying for the lightweight, and you're paying for that trigger job that you get from Smith. And if you don't want those things, that's totally fine. You can master a standard heavier double action trigger if you so choose. However, for me personally, I have a couple of those already. I wanted to get something unique and fun that will still work, and I wanted to pay the extra money so I did. I think it's worth it. I think it's a great gun. They're a little hard to find, but they're pretty freaking amazing. They would be a pretty good all around, all purpose gun. Uh, four inch might be a little bit better. That being said, it's all about whatever flavor you're into. I really like this gun. It was reliable and accurate. That's all you can ask of it. And if it looks cool, that doesn't hurt. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. All right, I've got the Smith & Wesson Model 327, eight shot, 357 Magnum revolver out here for a little range time. All right, he told me it's not fun to shoot, so. Oh my God, he ain't wrong. That is so fucking stupid. Oh my Lanta. Oh my God. Well, I have to tell you, this is literally the last, first and last freaking, I ain't doing that again.